How many times have I told you? The door was open, ma'am. Knock when you come in here. Yes, ma'am. Anything else? No. Get out of here. Mira, come here. What were you doing at my door? Come tell you. Mr. Roland, he downstairs. Ever think of knocking? Mira always knock. Two times she knock. You're lying. I didn't hear you. Oh, no, Miss Carew. Mira, no lie. Well, don't ever do it again, because if you do... Oh, no. Mira no do no more. She wants to leave a long time. Send Mr. Roland up. Yes, miss. Oh, it's you, Mother. What's happening, Lola? What are you doing with that gun? It's nothing, dear. Nyora frightened me. Lola, please don't go to the club tonight. Why? Oh, I don't know, dear. I, I guess I'm foolish, but I've had the strangest feeling lately that something horrible is going don't to happen. Don't be ridiculous, Mother. I've got to be at my own club on New Year's Eve. I can't afford to stay away. Andre can take care of everything. Please, Lola. Oh, don't worry, Mother. I'll be all right. I'll go to bed. Good night, dear. Yes? How long do I have to wait? Oh, sorry, Vincent. I forgot all about you. I'll be right out. Hurry up. It's getting late. You look adorable. Light me a cigarette, Vincent. We'll probably have trouble getting a cab tonight. Why? New Year's Eve. The whole world and his upstairs mate will be out tonight. I've got my car downstairs. I'd rather take a cab if you don't mind. Just as you say. How do I know who your chauffeur is? Heaven, Flora, you cannot go on suspecting everybody. I can't help it. Those letters are driving me crazy. I got another one this morning. All it read was, your time is drawing near. Oh, what am I going to do, Vincent? This is driving me out of my mind. You ought to take it up with the police. You know I can't do that. Then stay home tonight. Why What's go out? What's the staying home? I walk around these rooms afraid of my own shadow. I expect things to spring at me out of the walls. Now I'm going to the club.
business? Very hot. Every table are taken, and the best people in town. Look like it's gonna be a big night. Pretty good, eh? Some, something I, something you like, Mr. Carew? No, no. kind of sticks me. I can go so far and no further. Now look, you and I are sparring for a hole. Yeah. Suddenly I swing round and get a waist lock on you. Just as you're trying to get out of it, I switch and go into a grapevine. Clever, huh? The pain is killing me. Go on. I lean over backwards and pull you to the mat with me. Now all I've got to do is to press hard and I can tear you limb from limb. Charming thought. Well, what do you think of it? That's great. You could probably uh, revolutionize the wrestling business with it. Provided I didn't get a headlock on you. That's it. That's just what's sticking me. If I could figure out the next hold, I'd have one of the best. Say, listen, let's go up to the gymnasium and try it out. But now? Oh, yes, why not? Listen, maybe you don't know, but honestly, this is New Year's Eve. And it's a peculiar custom in this bewildered country of ours that on this night of all nights, we celebrate. Woo! See all these people here? They're having a good time. That's what we're supposed to be doing. You know why? Because we're kicking the old year right in the pants, just tossing it right out of our lives. And we're happy about it. We sure are happy about it. It's been a rotten year. Well, if you're going to talk to yourself, I uh, think I'll keep my date with the piccolo player. The taxi cab drive. He say that you left in his car. Thanks, Andre. Look. Take my advice, Lola. Report to the police. No. You can't ignore threats like this. Don't be a fool. Your life's in danger. Let me a break, please. All right, if you insist upon acting like an idiot, there's nothing... Where are you going? I had some champagne sent over. I'll see if it arrived. Pat, you're not going to the gym now, are you? I'll be right back, Tony. How do you do, Miss Carroll? How are you, Mr. Cole? It's quite an honor to have the police commissioner visit my club. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Your friend was quite right. It might not be a bad idea to report it to the police. Sometimes we can be very helpful. I don't know what you're talking about. Your life has been threatened, Miss Carew. A few minutes ago, you received a warning. Apparently, it wasn't the first one. Your friend pleaded with you to uh, speak to the police about it. You refused. He's gone out to see about some champagne. Is that correct? But you were downstairs. How could you have heard? I read your lips. Quite an accomplishment, lip reading. Don't you want to show me the message you received? Have you any ideas as no. to... Uh, this uh, gentleman you're with, how long have you... Bill, go. Four tears. Snap into it. Right. Take it easy. Don't get excited. Everything's all right. Why? What happened? Somebody fired a shot at her. This is Mr. Thatcher Coat, the police commissioner. Mr. Rowland. How do you do? How do you do? Come on, Miss Carew. Where to? You're going home. This is no place for you. In a mob like this, you're a wide open target. Couldn't find a thing, Chief. Nothing but drunks, millions of them. That'll give you an idea. Any one of them might be laying for you. What does it might be laying for her at home, too? I'm frightened, Mr. Colt. I'm going along. At least in your apartment, you've got a chance. Bill, 
Go down to headquarters and have them send six men up to Miss Cruz's apartment. Right. Joe. Yes, sir. Stay here and get that bullet out of the wall. Right. Andre. Wait, what's it? Tell my friend I've gone to Miss Cruz's apartment. Pay attention to me, I'm going to go to the room. That's your part of me. Lola has a lot of her good-looking cuties here tonight. You better stick around, Joe, because if the party gets wild, ours the man is going to get good and stiff-a-roo. Yowza, yowza. <laughs> and you may have to take me home. Come, Will, where the women are young and I hope friendly. Oh, hello, Kelly. What do you want? You wanted six cops. Here we are. <laughs> All right. Come on, boys. Well, hello, Tony. Where'd you come from? A little Stark brought me. All right, come on. Come, Willie. This better be a good party. Beg your pardon. But no women? For heaven's sake, you can't have a party without women. This is no party, you fathead. I'm here on police business. Oh. Wait a minute, Miss Carew. What's in there? My bedroom. Miss Carew, I'd rather you wouldn't go in there alone. What's out there? The terrace. Dylan. Yes, sir. Take a man and cover it. Check up on the roof, too. Yes, Chief. Who lives with you, Miss Crow? My mother and Miss Quires. Christine Quires, a friend of mine. Where's her room? In there. Is she in? No, she's gone to the Lion Inn with Mr. Everett. You know the actor. Guy Everett? Yes. Please be calm. I'll try. How many servants? Two. A maid and a butler. Where are they? Well, yours probably in his room. That's across the hall. How long has he been with you? Oh, about five years. I picked him up in Hollywood when I was in pictures. Oh, Mura's all right. Joe. Yes, Chief. You'd better take care of Mura. Sit in his lap until after 12 o'clock. What do you want me to find out? Ask him if he knows whatever became of Mojong. Want me to question him about anything? No. Just don't let him out of your sight. Right. Now, uh, how about the maid? Eunice, she's probably asleep. Where's her room? Right next to Mura's. Right next to Mura's, huh? Lucky foreigner. Oh, Mike. Take care of Eunice. Take care of her? Me? Yes, you. What's the matter? She's asleep. My friend Mike's worried. I'll take care of the lady. Never mind disturbing her. Just see that she doesn't leave the room. And Mike, take a look around. See what you can see. Okay, Chief. Oh, Bill. Yes, sir. Examine Miss Quire's room carefully. Yes, sir. I'll have a look at your room myself. Uh, Mr. Cord, is there any reason why I can't go home? None, but I'd rather you stayed if you don't mind. Don't uh, think I'm curious, but. What the heck's going on here? Miss Carew's life has been threatened. What? She uh, got a mysterious note saying she'll be murdered between now and midnight. Between now? That only gives her 15 minutes to live. Exactly. Tell me something else. Uh, what, what am I doing here? Well, everything seems to be all right. Tell me something about this man, Roland. Vincent, there's nothing to tell. He's just a friend of mine. Can you think of any reason why he should want to, uh, well, uh... Why, no. Sure? Of course. Uh, who is this? No one in particular. Just a man I knew in Paris years ago. You interested in him? Please don't ask me any questions. He can't possibly have anything to do with this. He's been dead for years. I'm sorry. Lola. What are you doing home? This is Thatcher Coat, the police commissioner, my mother. How do you do? How do you do? What's happened? Nothing. Mother, I'm going to tell you something and I want you to try to be calm. My life has been threatened. By whom? I don't know. That's what's driving me crazy. Oh, Lola. Don't be upset, Mrs. Carew. I've got my men all over the apartment. No one can possibly get in. That other room is okay, Chief. Good. 
That checks up with all but Mrs. Carew's room. Look it over, Bill. Right. Shall we go back to the living room? Well, I guess there's nothing else to do now but wait. Happy prospects. Do these things usually happen on time? From the way you ever guarded, Mr. Cord, seems to me practically impossible for anyone to reach her. I hope so. I was thinking, Thatcher, that if someone wanted to commit a murder, they could bore a hole in the ceiling, for instance, you see, and then boom! Can't you stop talking about it? Vincent, cigarette, please. Thank your pardon. Better take one of these. Is, is that the correct time? About ten minutes before the deadline. I'm sorry. <coughs> Wait a minute. You better stay where you are. Miss Carew! Miss Carew, send for the police! What for? There's a man in my room. Must so, be Mike. I don't know. I didn't ask his name. Why, that's positively indecent. All what I know is I woke up and there he was, feeling... Why, you know... Feeling all around the walls. I used got one look at his face and I knew he was a murderer. I jumped out of it. But that'd be a lesson to you, Mike. How did I know I was guarding a maniac? A maniac? I'll show you what... Wait a minute. That man meant no harm. Oh, he didn't, huh? Then what was he doing in my room? I made a respectful woman and I don't allow no man to come snooping around my bed. Oh, a bedroom snooper. You're a cad, sir. I've been going to call the police. Don't be a fool, Eunice. These men are all policemen. Policemen? Now go to bed. Go with her, Mike. What? Don't leave her. Commissioner, if it's all the same to you... Sorry, I... Mike. Come on, you. Don't touch me. You're on your lip. Get in. Leave me alone, you fool. And don't forget the reputation of the police department, Michael. Shut that door. It's cold in here. I'm sorry, dear. I suddenly felt dizzy. Are you trembling? Yes. I think I'll get a warm robe. Kelly. Why don't you retire, Mrs. Crewe? Oh, Mr. Colt, I'm terribly frightened. Well, of course you are, but after all, there's nothing you can do. Why worry? We'll take care of Lola. Thank you. Poor Lola, she's panic stricken. So would I be if I received a death threat. Well, you're receiving one right now. If you don't keep your mouth shut, you're going home and stay there. My lips are sealed. Are you sure that's the correct time? Yes. Exactly. Five minutes to go. Getting closer to the... Kelly. Yes, sir. Get the boys in here. Two minutes to twelve. If anyone attempts to kill you, Miss Carew, there's only one way it can be done. They'd have to put a bullet through one of these eight men.
Tap into it, Kelly. Yes, sir. Cover every exit. Guard the roof. Hurry up, boys. somebody else. Dr. Lengel may not be in. Dr. Lengel? Why did anyone send for him? Why? What's the matter with Dr. Lengel? Oh, oh, nothing. What does it matter now? Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Here he is. She was subject to them. What are you giving her, Doctor? Adrenaline. One chance in a million, but we might as well try it. She's dead. You still think it was heart failure, Doctor? I'm sure of it. She was perfectly well five minutes ago. It seems rather sudden. That's the way those things happen. It doesn't take that long. I don't believe it. Kelly, telephone headquarters and have Dr. Baldwin come at once. Yes, sir. If it wasn't heart failure, Commissioner, how do you think it did happen? Murder. Spring 73100. How, Commissioner? Well, I don't know. Headquarters? Yet. Kelly speaking. Coroner's office. Hold still. She will. Well, that's that. Maybe I can get to my party now. I never seem to fail every time I start to get plastered. Something like this breaks. You're right, Charlie. It's very inconsiderate. Why are you sticking around? You're no help. What do you mean, I'm no help? Thatcher wouldn't have solved the Gramercy Park case without me. He told me so himself. I'm his mascot. This looks like a challenge to even you, Mr. Colt. I've handled a lot of murder cases in my time, but compared to this, they were all simple. At least I knew how the murder was committed, and all I had to worry about was who did it. But in this instance, I tell you, Dr. Baldwin, that until I find out how this woman died, I'm checkmated. Possibly Lengel is right. Possibly. Ridiculous. She was murdered. Not a mark on her body except the hypopuncture. Well, perhaps it was slow poison. I'd have to perform a complete autopsy to determine that. Well, will you do it, Doctor, as quickly as you can? Mrs. Clare is ready. Send her in, Kelly. I'll have the body taken over to the city hospital. Thank you very much, Doctor. Quite all right. Feeling any better? Yes, thank you. I regret very much having to question you at this time, Mrs. Carew, but it's most essential. You can be of considerable help to us. I'll do what I can. Tell me, Mrs. Carew, did your daughter ever complain of heart attacks? Not that I know of. Or any other ailment that might have caused sudden death? I hardly think so. Still, I wouldn't know. Lola wasn't the complaining kind. Tell me about some of her friends. Uh, this man, for instance. What was her relationship to him? He meant nothing to her. Was she in love with him? No, she never loved him. She might have said so, but she didn't. I know she didn't. Tell me about him. There's nothing to tell. Basil is dead. Basil? Basil what? What was his last name? I don't remember. 
He was just some man she met in Paris years ago. If you don't mind, I'll take this. What for? Oh, I don't know. This young man interests me. Any objections? Oh, no. Kelly. Take this, please, and guard it carefully. That will be all, Mrs. Carew. I regret very much having to trouble you. Mr. Cowart, if you don't mind, I'd... Uh... I know. You want to go home? Uh, please, I'm tired. All right, go ahead. Thank you, Commissioner. Good night. Good night. Mike. Mike! Yes? Put a tail on him, night and day. Find anything, Joe? Not a thing. We covered every bit of ground around the house. Couldn't find a solitary thing. Oh, except this. Oh, except this, eh? What did you expect to find? Probably a baby grand piano. What is that, Commissioner? It's made of bamboo. Peculiar kind of box. Never seen anything like it in this country. Hmm, made in Sweden, eh? Where's the maid? In her room. Did this belong to Miss Carew? I don't know. To her mother? I don't know. Did you ever see it before? No. How long have you worked here? It just been going on six years. Right after my first husband left me. Your first? Uh, then you had more than one. No, but he was my first. Mm-hmm. You happy here? Oh, yes, sir. Miss Carew is very kind to me. Take the time I was laid up with the mumps, for instance. Did you ever quarrel with her? I should say not. How about Mura? How'd he get along with her? She was afraid of Mura. Afraid? Why? I don't know. I heard her say tonight she'd kill him if she caught him sneaking into her room again. You mean to say that he comes into rooms without knocking? Yeah. He listens in front of everybody's door. Sometimes he peeks through the keyhole. Oh, keyhole peeper. Hmm. What's he looking for? Don't ask foolish questions, Thatcher. The next time he comes near my door, I'll yab his eye out. <laughs> I don't blame you. If you should ask me, he's crazy. Plum crazy. He thinks he's a detective. Mm-hmm. He says to me once, he says, you know who I am? I'm Charlie Chan, the great detective from the movies. Is that so, I said. Well, I'm Queen Louisa Hottentot of the Fiji Isles, I says. Well, this case ought to be simple with Charlie Chan assisting me. What about Roland? Mr. Roland? Hm. You don't like him, eh? No. He was always kind of fighting with Miss Lola. Fighting? Yeah. Only the other day I was passing her door and I kind of stopped to listen. Kind of? Yeah. I heard voices, and, well, I thought, just for fun, I'd hear what they were saying. Mm hmm Mr. Rowan was saying he was a fool to get mixed up with Miss Lola. What did she say? She said, well, it's too late now. You're mixed up plenty, and you're darn tootin' gonna stay that way. Anything else? Well, it was getting exciting, and I was listening hard, but I couldn't hear nothing. Uh, they were talking low, kind of. Looks to me like you and kind of doing some keyhole peeping yourself, kind of. No, just Mora, he peeps. Oh, only Mura peeps. Mm-hmm. It's remarkable. Remarkable. Did anyone ever tell you that you looked like Charlie Chan? Yes. I thought so. The moment I saw you, I said, there's the man to help me solve this case. You're pretty clever. Well, that's obvious. Anybody can see that. Now, Mura, between you and me, I've got this case pretty well figured out. But I don't want to spring anything until I have your theory. Who do you think killed Miss Carew? Mr. Everett. The actor? What makes you think so? I hear him say, someday I'll kill you. He said that to Miss Carew? Why did he say it? Mira, no, find out. Thanks, Mira. I knew you'd put your finger right on it. I'll look into that. Mira knows somebody else who may be killed, Miss Carew. Somebody else? Who? The mother. Oh, come now, Mira. Mira knows. Is that so? One time I hear Miss Carew say to mother, I'm getting tired of you. Someday I'll throw you out. 
Is that the way for a daughter to talk to mother? Well, hardly, Mura, hardly. But that's very significant. Someday we're going to have to get together again and have a long, long talk. Thanks. Mura know another one who may be killed, Miss Carew. Another one, eh? Well, who is it this time, Mura? I'll uh, match you. Come on, Mura, who is it? Dr. Lingo. Dr. Lingo? Well, what did you hear him say? Him say to Miss Carew, if you kill to the police, I'll kill myself. You heard him say that, eh? There's a boy who's been doing some tall keyhole peeping. Well, uh, what do you think he meant by that, Mura? Mura, no, find out. But Mura, she think it's Dr. Lingo who killed Miss Carew. Tony, he think that uh, maybe everybody here goes screwy. Excuse me. Tony, he get himself a whole lot more to drink. What is it, Bill? That guy Everett in the living room. Good. Dug him up at his club. They never did go to that lion in like they said. Is Miss Quires with him? No. Did you tell him why he was wanted? Didn't tell him a thing. Fine, Bill. Mura, no, another one. Save it, Mura. There he is. Mr. Cole, what's all this about? Why was I brought here? You've no right to drive me out of my... Sit down, sit down, Mr. Everett, please. Cigarette? Please. No, I beg your pardon. Uh, Mr. Everett, how long have you known Lola Carew? Oh, on and off for about two years. Did you know her well? What hard to say that, I... Why do you speak in the past tense? You sound as if... Miss Carew is dead. Dead? Murdered. Oh, that's horrible. Why should anybody want that's to... That's what I'm trying to find out. When did you see her last? Why, this evening. I was with Christine Quires. Where's Miss Quires now? Christine? Isn't she here? Here? Why, yes. She came home about 11 o'clock. At least, that's where she said she was going. She isn't in this apartment. Well, that's funny. Thought you two were going to the Lion Inn. We started to. But on the way, we had a quarrel. She got out of my car and said she was going home. <coughs> it's the maid. They got her. She's all right, she just fainted. What happened? A face! I saw it there in the window. It was staring at me. You'd better go to bed, Eunice. You're getting a little hectic. I saw it, I tell you. What's out there? Nothing. Fourteen stories of it. It was horrible. That awful face! I was staring at me. Now, calm yourself, calm yourself. You'll get a little bit on... <laughs> Give me a hand, boys. It's Christine. I'll get a jet, Tony. All I've got to do is to figure out how to break that headlock, and it's a cinch. Hey, look, if we're going to the gym, come on. Okay, Zabisco. Here they are, Mr. Colt. I've got pictures of them all. All right. Take this one, too. Put them on the wires right away. You're sure covering a lot of territory, Mr. Mm -hmm. Colt. Now, which one of these mugs goes first? This one. Yes, sir. The one to Paris.
Voici une demande de New York. Voyez si vous pouvez trouver l'enregistrement de cet homme. Son prénom est Basile, mais nous ne connaissons pas son nom de famille. Je ne me rappelle pas jamais avoir vu cette figure avant. Consult Manchester file number 81966, Guy Everett. Cable full record to Thatcher Colt, New York Police Commissioner. Emil Lenger, number 7426, Frankfurt am Main. Kabel in New York, information über Emil Lenger. So fuck with it. Telegraphia, New York. Media Lang on the Uni Starcom. Registrations number 02387. Cashier. Ricordo 698-411, Vincenzo Renaldo, Milano. Telegrafare a New York, al Dipartimento di Polizia, immediatamente. Ito Mura, Gumat, New York. Hele Gizem, New York Kesas, Yuri Shokaichu. I tell you, Kelly, I had poor Tony Groggy. Look, let me show you. First, I got a Japanese arm lock. Oh, oh I'm awfully sorry. Then I swung my right leg round and finally worked into a headlock. I was gradually forcing him down to the mat when I got a report from Paris. Uh, they say they can't uh, give us any dope on Basil unless they have his last name. Well, tell him to wire the head waiter to Moulin Rouge. That's probably where Basil spent most of his time. How do you know? You might as well wire every head waiter in Paris. No, the Moulin Rouge. That's the place where Lola danced six years ago. Snap into it, Connolly, and let me know as soon as you hear from them. Yes, sir. What makes you so interested in this Basil person? Oh, just a hunch. The only hole that I didn't get working this afternoon was the grapevine. Now look, I get a leg lock on him and force him down to the mat. I've never known you to waste time on hunches. Well, I guess you're right. It's a hunch. Plus. Plus what? Only trouble is that his hands are free and he gets a headlock on me. Plus what? Plus the fact that Lola's attitude about him was very mysterious. Now add the fact that her mother's attitude was even more mysterious, and we have what is commonly known as a suspicion. But the man's been dead for years. Has he? Well, that's what Lola Carew said, and so did her mother. Well, perhaps they're right. Is everything set for our little tea party this afternoon? Yes, sir. Invitations all gone out? Yes, sir. Well, it ought to be an interesting experiment, don't you think? <laughs> I guess so. Tony? Oh, hurry up. Oh, will you hurry? I've just invented a new drink. Look, a half inch brandy, a half inch chartreuse, a half inch cream, a dash of Tabasco, then you shake well. Here, take a taste and buy St. Louis. Where did you get those test tubes? Listen, I don't get sore. I'm not hurting your old test tubes. I'm just making a great scientific experiment. Well, I hope you had them sterilized before you used them. Sterilized? I had some very deadly germs in those test tubes. I knew there was something that made that drink taste good. Say, Thatch, where can I get some good germs cheap? Why don't you taste it? Nice flavor? Mm-hmm. I have some slightly used razor blades you could chew on for a while. Uh, Miss Tarholm. Show her in. Women? I'm having a little party. Why didn't you tell me? Good afternoon, Miss Tarholm. Good afternoon. Sit down. What would you like? I would like to sweep and dust and sew and have babies. Uh -huh. Refreshments. I have a new drink that'll make you forget your sweeping and dusting. Tea? With lemon. But the others are here, Mr. Colt. Oh, have them come in, Walter. And Walter, you may serve the tea. Very good, sir.
Darf ich Ihnen eine gute Zigarre anbieten, Herr Doktor? Nein, danke. Mura, ich habe Gadeska. Du machst es. Du hast es gemacht. Signore, willst du fumare? Grazie. Prego. Cigar? Cigarette, please. Mr. McDougall, send him in. Where's Mrs. Carew? She couldn't come. Thanks. Why couldn't she come? Well, she's sick in bed. Got a doctor. Mm hmm, I see. Anything else, Commissioner? No, that's all, Mike. Well, I guess I'll be going. Goodbye, Mike. Goodbye, Commissioner. <laughs> Thanks, Commissioner. <laughs> Well, my friends, there's really very little I have to say to you except this. You're probably the choicest collection of first-class, grade-A thugs I've ever had to deal with in any one case. As far as I've been able to find out, there isn't an honest, moral, decent person among you. Big pocket. Another cup of tea, Miss Starholm? Counterfeiter. Smuggler. Forger. What do you mean? I've got a report about you from Scotland Yard two feet long. Sit down. And last but not least, a phony quack deported from Germany. As pretty a rogues gallery as I care to meet. Nothing would give me greater pleasure than to clap the lot of you into jail. But unfortunately, I cannot. You committed crimes in your respective countries, but you paid society its debt. You served your terms like good little boys and girls, which leaves me helpless. Believe me, I could weep. Of course, I could have you all deported. But don't let that worry you. I have no intention of doing it yet, because one of you is a murderer. One of you is responsible for the death of those two women, and that's what interests me right now. Oh, there's no use in looking at each other. I happen to know that every one of you had a perfectly sound motive for killing Lola Carew. They're all pleased that she's dead. How she managed to extract blackmail from a pack of crooks like yourselves is nothing short of genius. She bled you until you were not only broke, but desperate. She even had a pair of you worked for her as servants, which you were never paid. Oh, Miss Carew was a very fussy person. She kept records. I'm very grateful to her. And that, surprising as it may seem, is about all. I just wanted you to know that you cannot get away with murder. And one of you made the mistake of trying. Good afternoon. Don't I have you meet the nicest people, Tony? Listen, old boy. You're supposed to be a very shrewd detector of crimes, isn't that right? Well, I wouldn't say that. I haven't solved this one yet. Anyways, what's the big idea? Of what? Of telling that bunch of cutthroats everything? But I don't know everything. As a matter of fact, I don't know anything. At least not about this murder, and that was one way of trying to find out. You see, they're all rats, and a rat, Tony, when he's frightened, will scurry for cover, and that's just what I want them to do. I know, but suppose uh, they skip town. Oh, you do them a grave injustice. They wouldn't play a dirty trick like that, not on me. <laughs> I get it, I get it, I get it. Until this case is over, they're going to have plenty of company, no matter where they go. What do you expect to find out? Well, I don't know, but I'm sure of one thing. If I've missed any clues, they lead me to them. The first thing that a criminal does, the moment that he's suspected, is to start looking around for any clues that he may have left laying around. And if there are any, he'll take all kinds of chances to uh, cover up. Hey, the bamboo box, it's gone. One of the rats is frightened already. I see it, I bet you'll never know who took it. That's great work, Thatcher. Say, why don't you get yourself into some nice hardware business? It's less dangerous, and really, it requires hardly any brains at all. Who took it? Dr. Lengo. There you are. Where am I? Oh, if I could only find out why Dr. Lengel took that box, he I... He probably know. thought it was his trunk, or maybe he has a hobby for collecting trick boxes. <laughs> now, don't laugh. Nothing unusual in that. I once knew a man who collected hairpins, and you'd be surprised where he had to go to get them. Some of the best pillows in town. Oh, it'd be a great hobby for you, Tony. Thatch, I know a hairpin that'll knock your eye out. I think I'll give her a little buzz now. When did he take it, Kelly? As they were going out. Mm-hmm. What do you make of it? Shouldn't I ask? 
Of course, ask. Always ask. It helps me crystallize an idea if I ever have one. All right. I'm asking. What's the answer? I don't know. Lingle, eh? Kelly. Yes, sir. Lie down on the couch. Huh? Lie down on the couch. Well, what are you waiting for? Come on. Come on, Kelly, hurry up, hurry up. That's fine. That's fine. Now, let's see. That's just about the position that Lola's body was in when Dr. Lengel entered. See if I can remember everything he did. Came in and went directly to her. And he knelt down and felt her pulse. That's right, isn't it? Yes, sir. And he leaned over and listened to her heart. Oh, Commissioner. Well, looks like I'm making progress, eh, Kelly? I'll say you are. And might I suggest that uh, this is no place for it? Shut up a minute, will you? Sit down till I get through. After he finished listening to her heart, he rose and went to the piano for his hypodermic. He returned and lifted her arm and proceeded to give her the injection. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He did nothing of the kind. As a matter of fact, he reached over for her other arm and gave her the injection. That's funny. I wonder why he deliberately reached over. Oh, he seemed to be searching for something. For what? I don't know, but I'll wager Dr. Baldwin was wrong. That's all I've been able to find. Violent contraction of the heart muscles. You still think she died a natural death, eh, Doctor? Well, there's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. Give me a shot, Doctor. A shot? Yes, a hypodermic injection. You crazy man, a shot of what? A little chocolate sauce wouldn't be bad. <laughs> no, no, the empty syringe. Come, Doctor, we're wasting time. Well, all right. Hey, Doctor, this is free. I'll have my tonsils out. Where do you want it? Uh, the same place, as, uh, right about there, Doctor. Hmm. Look, he likes it. <laughs> have you a magnifying glass, Doctor? Yes, I think so. Please. There you are. Doctor, take a look at that puncture. Well, what's the matter with it? Nice clean puncture. How does it compare with the one on Lola Carew's arm? Well, uh, hers was a bit ragged. In fact, the skin had been torn away. Exactly. Give me the robe, uh, Kelly. Here it is. What are you getting at? That mark on Lola Carew's arm never was caused by a hypodermic needle. Well, you yourself saw Lengel give it to her. Certainly he gave her the injection. Her arm was pierced by something else long before Dr. Lengel got there. Pierced by what? When Dr. Lengel walked into that room, he knew exactly how Lola Carew was killed. He knew that on one of her arms was a puncture of some kind. He kept looking for it. When he didn't find it on the arm nearest him, he reached over and tried you to... Mean he was trying to cover up the real cause of her death? We're getting warm, Tony. There you are. Whatever killed Lola Carew was hidden there. Those look like blood spots. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't mean anything. Dr. Lengel's hypo might have brought them on. Well, what do you suppose did it? I mean, it couldn't have been a knife or anything like that. Dr. Lengel could tell us something about it. Tell you about it. Seems to me, Mr. Colt, that when you lay your hands on Lengel, you'll have Lola Carew's murderer. Looks like it, doesn't it? I noticed that you haven't bothered much with the other one. What's her name? Uh, Christine. No, I haven't. Oh, thank you, buddy. No, Christine was an innocent victim. She made the mistake of coming home at the wrong time. No murderer would hang his victim out on an awning unless he was desperate. Christine walked in on him. He murdered her. And when he heard someone coming, he got rid of the body, expecting, I suppose, to dispose of it later. Well, here we are. Dr. Lingle. Dr. Lingle. What's up, Commissioner? It's dark in there. Dead? 
Yes. Hey, Commissioner, what's this? It's a funny little thing. I wonder if it... Don't touch it, anybody. That's the thing that killed Lola Carew. What is it, Commissioner? It's a scorpion. Pleasant little fellow. His sting means instant death. Holy mackerel. No, Mike. It's a scorpion. It was planted in her robe. Kill it, Dylan. Put it in a bottle. Well, no wonder Dr. Lingle wanted to get hold of this. The scorpion's home. This seems to settle all of your troubles, doesn't it, Thatcher? Does it? Well, it's quite obvious that Dr. Lingle killed the two women, and when he realized that you were closing in on him, committed suicide. Suicide? By scorpion? Why not? I'm sorry I don't agree with you, Tony. The doctor ought to be able to find a more pleasant way Funny this scorpion should have bitten him on the palm. Wonder how that could have happened. Somebody selected a place for the scorpion that Dr. Lingle was sure to handle. Suicide was the farthest thing from his mind. I'm afraid he was murdered. Dr. Magnus, has anyone else ever come to you for, uh, for one of these scorpions? No. Dr. Langlis was the first request I've had in years. They're very rare and consequently very expensive. The two I sold Dr. Langl came from Mexico. Two? Well, yes. I sold him two of them. Are you sure? Why, of course. Well, that means that the other one is still around somewhere. Please understand, Mr. Colt. I was told that they were to be used for scientific research. And Langle being a doctor is only natural. Of course, natural. of course. Thank you very much, doctor. And not at all. Thank you. Oh. If there's anything else... Oh, you've been very helpful, and I'll call on you. Thank you very much, doctor. Good day. Good day, sir. Another scorpion, eh? <laughs> Looks like the murder isn't through yet. Who do you suppose did it? Kelly, you can ask the most difficult questions with the greatest ease. Now, if I knew who it was, I'd have him arrested, wouldn't I? Sorry. Might be any one of them. Eunice, Mura, Everett, Roland. Might even be Mrs. Carew. Her mother? Well, it's improbable, but still possible. Whoever it was was in league with Dr. Lingle. And apparently a most vicious character. I believe that he became panic-stricken and got rid of Lingle. Hello? Yes? Yes. Paris calling. They'll be ready to talk in a minute. Thank you. Hello. 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 Oh, Monsieur Dupont, comment allez-vous? Oh, c'est très bien. Et vos gentils enfants? Vraiment? Oh, elle est si intelligente. Hein? Très bien. Et cette photo? Basil, comment? Et plaît le nom. Voulez-vous, s'il vous plaît? B-O-U-C-H-E-T. Boucher. Take that down, will you please, Kelly? B-O-U-C-H-E-T. Boucher. Vous dites? Il s'est suicidé? Oui, oui, c'est ça. Lola Carou. Oui. Ah. Et rien de son passé? Ses parents? Oui. Ah. Oui. Oui. Oui, j'espère être là-bas. Bientôt. Merci, Monsieur Dupont. Mes amitiés à votre charmante femme ainsi qu'aux enfants. Au revoir. Et merci mille fois. Au revoir, Monsieur Dupont. Well, seems as though the Carews don't lie. The young man's been dead over six years. Uh, his name is Basil Boucher. Committed suicide by jumping into the Seine, and Lola Carew is responsible for his death. Lola Carew? Yes, it's the old, old story. Young man, madly in love, squandered a fortune out of which he embezzled from the bank. When he was about to be caught, he committed suicide. A very pathetic story. But where does it get you? Well, nowhere, unless, uh... Unless what? Well, unless... I promise you, I promise you. I want to talk to you, and you've got to listen to me. 
Keep your hands off me. He was leaving town, Commissioner. But what about it? I have a perfect right to leave town if I want to. Sit down, Mr. Everett. You'll be able to go anywhere you choose in a few days, provided you're innocent, of course. I had nothing to do with it. Well, perhaps you didn't. And as soon as you're able to prove it, you'll be a free agent again. Until then, I'm afraid, you're going to have to keep yourself available. I won't do it. You've no right to Would keep me in town. Would you rather I placed you under arrest? I could hold you as a suspect, you know. I've been very lenient with you, Mr. Everett. All right, boys. Sit down. As a matter of fact, I'm very glad you dropped in. There are a number of questions I'd like to ask you. You never were in the service, were you, Mr. Everett? Service? Uh, yes, about 15 years ago, the world went slightly haywire. We had what was called a world war. Oh, that? No, I thought so. You're a rotten shot, my friend. What do you mean? Anybody but a blind man could have hit Lola Carew New Year's Eve. I didn't do it. I've never owned a gun in my life. Are you sure of that? Of course I'm sure. What use should I have about this? This is a copy of the record of a permit to carry an automatic 38 caliber pistol issued to Guy Everett two years ago. Yes. I took out the permit, but I never bought a gun. Ever see this before? Where'd you get that? Well, the police are not all children, Mr. Everett. And don't tell me you didn't use it, because there was one shot fired out of it. And you fired that shot, and you fired it at Lola Carew. But I didn't. I didn't do anything of the kind. Christine, she... Go on, my boy, go on. Oh, I suppose I might as well tell the truth. Christine's gone now, and it really doesn't matter. She knew about the blackmail. I was paying Lola, and swore she'd get her. We were going to be married, you know. She saw a great chance New Year's Eve. She knew I had a gun, and before I knew what was happening, she grabbed it and left my apartment. I tried to stop her. I begged her not to be foolish, but she wouldn't listen to me. I don't blame her. I don't blame anybody for killing Lola Carew. I'd have done it myself if I'd had the nerve. She bled me for every penny I earned. She threatened to expose me as a jailbird, and I couldn't afford to have that come out. It would have wrecked my career as an actor, so I paid. And paid plenty. Oh, but I'm glad she was murdered. But I had nothing to do with it. Well, you do believe me, don't you, Mr. Coat? I'll tell you more about it tonight. Tonight? Yes, I want you to be at Mrs. Carew's apartment at 9 o'clock. Very well, Mr. Coat. Do you think he's telling the truth? Perhaps. Where do you want this, Commissioner? Oh, uh, put it right here in the chair, Duke. What's this about tonight at the Carews? Oh, just a little experiment. By the way, remind me to have them all there, will you? I remember asking her about this picture. Then, Mrs. Carew came into the room. There, right? Yes. She had a robe on, didn't she? No, no, not until much later. Put it there, Kelly. When I finished with Mrs. Carew, Lola and I returned to the living room. Go on, Kelly. Oh, one moment, please. In here, nothing particularly exciting happened for a few minutes. Except for the fact that I was a bad boy. I remember. Have them come in, Kelly. All right, folks. Let's see, what came next? The Swedish Nightingale screamed for help. <laughs> oh, yes. Eunice woke up and found a man snooping around her bedroom, to which she objected strenuously. She insisted upon calling the police, which for a moment I resented as a subtle hint of sarcasm. It was then about five minutes to twelve. The next thing I remember was the robe episode. Lola felt chilly and thought she'd put on something warm. She then left for the bedroom. I was a little wary of leaving her unguarded, even for a second, and sent Kelly with her. Remember that, Kelly? Yes, sir. When she returned, she was wearing this robe. By this time, it was four minutes to twelve. 
I called some of my men and prepared to protect her against any possible attack. I had my men form a circle around her in the center of which she sat. Now, on the surface, it looked as if it was impossible for anybody to kill Lola Carew. But we all know exactly what took place in this room. Oh! Mr. Colt! <laughs> They've got him! Get a doctor, quick! Right. Oh, Mr. Colt, just as you were about to find out who killed Lola. Now we'll never know. Oh, Mr. Colt, don't die. You promised you'd find Lola's murderer. You promised me. Please don't die. Oh, Mr. Colt. Oh. Wait a minute. Cut it, cut it! Well, you came close to getting away with it. Mrs. Boucher? Boucher? Yeah. Mrs. Boucher. Boucher. Boucher? The mother of a certain young man who committed suicide in Paris six years ago. Isn't she Lola's mother? Only for professional reasons. She's what is known as a stage mother. We're very unkind not to mention that little detail, Mrs. Boucher. It gave me a lot of trouble. It's true. I am Mrs. Boucher. And I'm glad I murdered Lola Carew. She had it coming to her. She killed my son, that's what she did. He wouldn't have become a thief. He wouldn't have committed suicide if it hadn't been for her. I made up my mind I'd get her for it. I followed her all over the world. When I first met her in Hollywood, she was sick. And I nursed her back to health. She had no idea who I was. When she hired me as her stage mother, I knew my chance had come. But I waited. Just killing her wasn't enough. I wanted to torture her. She had tortured my boy. I had Dr. Lengel get the scorpions for me. He wanted to kill her too. Everyone wanted to kill her. I sent her those notes to make her life miserable before she dies. Why did you kill Christine Quires? Oh, I didn't want to kill her, but she came home just at the wrong moment. And Dr. Lengel? Dr. Lengel was a fool. He was ready to confess and I had to get rid of him. Oh, I'm sorry about him. And Christine, too. But I'm glad Lola Carew's dead and I'm glad I killed her. I'm glad. Glad, do you hear? I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad! Glad, I tell you! Glad! <laughs> hey, Mug. Help me off with this thing, will you? God, this rubber hurts. Come on. I'm getting prickly heat. Hurry up, will you? So this is why... Scorpions don't bite police commissioners. Oh. Come on, tell me. How did you pin the murder on the old lady? Because no mother would kiss the photograph of a funny-looking foreigner five minutes after her daughter was murdered. How'd you find that out? Well, she left her lip marks on the glass. And I put two and two together and found out she was Mrs. Boucher. I got it now, Tony. It's a cinch. All I've got to do is to pull you back, and if you resist, I'll break one of your legs. Cute, isn't it? <laughs> Congratulations, old boy. <laughs>